Hello. Hello. <laughs> how is everybody doing? How is, how are you guys? You know, Nert, did you know that it's our 50th episode right now? Wow. Um, remember that other show we did? It didn't on, make it this it far. It did not. And this is wildly more successful. That show got canceled. It got canceled at <laughs> right episode 48. <laughs> yeah. But, so um, this is so much more successful, so much more popular and Oh yeah, we're better. killing it. And yeah. we're about to pop off. <laughs> Guys, we're about to pop off and I might pop off. She's going to pop something out yeah. and then the show's going to pop yeah. off. We're popping. Yeah. Um, so today, um, we're going to talk about beauty mm-hmm. and its ugly cousin, aging yes mm-hmm. yes we're gonna talk a little sex in the city because we're chicks um yeah. so duh we're gonna talk about <laughs> dating and relationships because we're chicks so duh basically this is a chick show it's a chick show because you know we love our male viewers and listeners but this show is supposed to be for women <laughs> um, despite the fact that more men than women watch, watch which is probably comment. a testament to our wit and beauty and beauty yes so thank you you're welcome um, you're saying thank you to them, but yeah. I'm saying yes. you're welcome. Yes. Um, <laughs> so let's start with beauty and aging. Okay. So something we know, I was going to say know nothing about, but beauty, we know more about than aging, aging is like a very foreign concept it's, to us. I've never had a wrinkle, never will get one. Um, and we're both so skinny that like people are concerned. Um, people are also <laughs> cons- concerned apparently about Lana Del Rey who is skinny again. Wow. So it's Coachella right now. We were invited to go, but she's really pregnant pregnant. and I'm just swamped with work. So we couldn't go to watch Lana perform live, unfortunately, but she basically debuted a new era. Yeah. She's in a whole new era. She's in her gorgeous era. Yeah. Coquette is done. No more bows. I know. No more black hair. Yeah. That was black dresses. Way out out of of palette. palette. Terrible. (laughs) terrible um but she was glowing on stage like she just looked incredible and she kind of she yeah she was just gr- glowing and maybe it was that ozempic glow that you know only it's lana diarrhea only lana she though could do ozempic yeah. and we we're all like yeah that makes sense yeah. it's kind of like in her lane mm-hmm. ozempic like it she's is. gonna write a song about it no it is for it sure is. like she smokes cigarettes and she's yeah. kind of a slut and she's gonna do ozempic like and- her most favorite Famous song ever that shot her to fame is about her watching her boyfriend play like World of Warfare or whatever. Like she's World of Warfare. What is that? World of Warcraft. Is that what? Yeah. Is that what that song's about? Something like that. Video games. Yeah. Oh my god, I love that song. Or is it Born to Die? Is about that? I don't know. Oh. One of them is about her watching oh, a guy. I love that. Yeah. I've sorry, done a World lot of, of Warcraft, that. not World what of Warfare. What a loser. I don't play <laughs> video games, and I probably never will. Um, okay, so <laughs> I do, and I will. Later. I'm not a hater. I just I don't know. Yeah, it's not for everyone. Not yeah. I'm not good. I just at don't it. have a system or money to buy one. Mm-hmm. So if you want to buy one, subscribe You'll- to our YouTube channel and <laughs> donate <laughs> to our PayPal. And then eventually, when my husband's game comes out, you can play that one. Yes, and I'll love advertise to. that for free because I love him. That's so sweet. I know. Okay, um, so basically. The internet erupted in a frenzy in response to Lana Del Rey's weight loss. Um, this one girl named Mary Morgan. Um, gosh, people at Timcast are going to think we're obsessed with them. Because <laughs> we are. We are. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. I had no idea. Yeah. So she is like a pop culture girly. She's like a, she has some pretty good takes. She's like a Catholic girl. I don't know. Love that. Yeah. So she said, Lana is skinny again. We are so back. (laughs) Um, Which obviously some people were not in love with. I feel like it's sort of a joke. Of course. Like, can we not take things so seriously? I think it's definitely a joke, but she did sort of double down in response to the backlash. And she said something along, I don't remember. I couldn't find the specific tweet, but it was something along the lines of, um, well, I just, when you're fat or overweight, you're unhealthy and I care about her health. But it's like, if you did care about her health, wouldn't you have talked about it before? <laughs> like, I don't she think. She wasn't that fat. Exactly. That her That's health the thing. was in question. I know. She didn't lose 100 pounds. No, it wasn't she like was, she went from Lizzo to Bella Hadid. No, she was super skinny in her 20s. Yeah. And then she like. Bl- blossomed a little bit. Yeah, sure. And she, and then people were like, oh, she's fat because she's a celebrity. And that's what they say about I anyone. I also feel like if Lana Del Rey is the most in control person when it, I feel like when it comes to her art and her look, she's so chaos. if she, she's chaos. So if she gained weight, I honestly feel like it was on purpose. Yeah. Like I genuinely think or so. Or she's like on brand. Right. Like she's going to drink too much. She's going to eat too much. She's going to smoke too much. Like that's her thing. 
And she makes it sexy and she makes it fun. And so. like I said, like if she wanted to lose the weight earlier, she would have. Like she just would have. I feel like that's her thing. Like she's very in control of, of it all. Um, I don't know. What do you think about the response though? Um, I think she probably did Ozempic and people were like calling her out on that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, like you said, like, yeah, that's on brand for her. Yeah. We also don't know. No, of course we don't know. She also like, like we talked about, she also went from like not being in palette for like her, that era to like all of a sudden she's wearing like bright baby blues and she looks so freaking good. And she like lightened her hair and she's smiling and stuff. And it's like, she just looks so beautiful. I don't, I don't, I just. She's also a testament to how your life is not over after 40 or whatever. 30. I, or how old is she though? 30. I think she's, is she 40? She's in her 30s. Yeah. She's okay. like a year young. She's like a little bit younger than Taylor Swift. Okay. So who's she's a little, who's my age. Okay, sure. So your life's not over after 30 and clearly not into your 40s if you look at the Kardashians who are also, whatever you think about them, they're they're beautiful. Um, so it's kind of refreshing to see all these people praising her beauty because she's geriatric according to the <laughs> manosphere. So it's quite, it's quite pleasant yes, to see I know. the response. And just another tidbit. She rode away on a motorcycle after her set that said LDR 007. What do we think that means? I don't know. She's going to do the Bond song. <gasps> it's her time, right? Oh my god. That's gosh. what people are speculating. She is the perfect Bond Of course. It's, it's years too late. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to be oh getting a new Bond who a lot of people are thinking is Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, who I also think it's his time. He's been acting forever. Like I watched this I don't know teen, who that is. I'm going to Google it right now. He's dating that really old woman. Mm, he that. was like in this teen show that me and my friends loved growing up called Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging, which is like this really British like movie. And he was such a heartthrob. And now people are, people are speculating that he's going to be the next Bond. It's not official. Oh, he's perfect. Yeah, he's, he's great. And he's at he's the right cute. age. He's really good looking. And he is married to an older woman. Yes. And he's a very good actor. Um, he was in Anna Karenina. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he's, cute. he's really no, good. He works. he works. Yeah. And she recently followed I'll him on Instagram. It. So I <gasps> just think these, everything's happening. I love James Bond. Yeah, me too. Big fan. I know. And it was just time for a new one. Mm-hmm. Like clearly Daniel Craig hated the franchise at the end, at the end. so much that he wanted Spoiler. himself killed. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. The only James Bond movie where James Bond dies. dies. And for a very Stu- stupid reason. And like he has a child. No, yeah. it's, stop. It's Rewrite. Just, burn it, was, it down. It was pretty bad. It was bad. Would I rewatch Royale, it? Though? Yes, I would. Oh my <laughs> yes, God. Of course. Such a good movie. No, just a classic. A classic. A classic. Yes. Okay. Anyways. Back to what we're talking yeah, about. Sorry. Lana Del Rey. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm happy about it. Um, I just think she looks great. Maybe mm-hmm. she's on Ozempic. Whatever. She, If she's on Ozempic, she's dealing with some wicked diarrhea. And I honestly wish her the best. Well, I think people think she's on Ozempic because we saw her at the Grammys two months ago. And she was obviously a little more on the plump side. Again, she's never really been that fat, no, to your point. No. People However, are acting like it's hundreds. It's not. It's and, like 30 pounds. Tops. Yeah, maybe 20. Like, yeah. she's still, like, she still isn't, like, a stick right now. She's still got her beautiful curves. She's gorgeous. Yeah, she's, she's gorgeous. She's also, like, we've said a billion times, and I'll say it again. She's just, like, in palette, and she just looks so good. She's glowing. Everything looks good. She's okay. glowing. Anyway, we love you, Lana, and we're yeah. excited for your new album to and drop in so September. we're to hang next time we're yes. in wherever you are. Sorry live. we couldn't make it to the show. Sorry. But we're, we'll come to the yeah, next one. I was busy because I had to go to Costco go um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and buy diapers so yes you understand so busy okay okay so this moving is on super cute i feel yes. like this conversation is also like a bigger conversation yes. about girls girls yes um which we can have right now okay great yeah. good <laughs> I, that's mostly what i want to talk about exactly so okay we talked about this maybe did we talk about this on the show i don't remember but love is blind there we definitely tweeted about it we've or something tweeted, we've chatted i yeah. don't know if it was on this show or not i'm very yeah. busy again costco um yeah. So Love is Blind is a dating reality show where the people don't meet. They talk through a screen. I'm telling this to mostly to my father who doesn't know what I'm talking about. They're casting in Toronto, cast dad. <laughs> <laughs> he, they're going to need blind, to be blind to take him. No offense, She's father. She's kidding. Joking. She's You're kidding. gorgeous. Um, so this one girl, so the whole point of the show is that they fall in love with your personality, not your face. And so this one girl, Chelsea Blackwell, she went like viral because she mentioned on the show. She's like, people say that I basically, I'm paraphrasing. She's like, people tell me all the time I look like Megan Fox. Which by the way, you're not supposed to do on the show. You're not supposed to describe how you look. Exactly. So, so that was, the roles. that was part of it. So she set herself up for disaster because it was like a cheat code that you use again to make a video game reference. It's like a cheat code that you use throughout the 
whole game. And then when you get to the final boss, you can't use it. So you're like frigged. Yeah. Because she, so she tells this guy, she looks like Megan Fox. He lights up because he can't see her. And he's like, oh my God, the hottest and woman I on the planet. I genuinely think that's why he ended up choosing Chelsea over the yeah. other girl. Well, also the other girl had some baggage. Sure. They, I mean, they all Whatever. did. But of course, yeah. they all have baggage. But the other girl is like a beautiful. She actually She's looks, actually yes. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, um, but she didn't say, oh, I look like Megan Fox. No. So this girl. She who, did say, you'll be sorry when you see she me. Did. She <laughs> said, you're going to need an EpiPen yeah. after you see me And in that's life. a fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so when they finally meet, the guy is visibly disturbed. And he says in his interview, he's like, she definitely lied about the way she looks. And they're not together anymore. Spoiler. No. Um, so. Chelsea Blackwell has been dragged because yeah unnecessarily people have been pretty mean um because of reasons we'll post a photo of her it's fine this is what she looks like she's she's not ugly she's not ugly she's not she's, Megan Fox she's pretty but Meg no one is Megan no, Fox Megan not Fox even is, Megan Fox Megan Fox okay? is a twelve out of ten exactly and yeah and even we, with the weird face exactly yeah so Megan Fox finally came out and said something about all this because she hadn't really said anything yet it's not her job to but no. Uh, do you want to read what she said? Sure. She said, Megan Fox talks about Love is Blind star Chelsea Blackwell's comparison That's not what to her. She's. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just. No, I know. I know. Whatever. <laughs> I think they get it. Yeah, um, no, they get it. I'm I just didn't silly. watch it, but I think in general, no one deserved to get bullied. I don't think she deserved that. I think people went way too hard. I did see a picture of her. A hundred thousand percent people have told her, you kind of look like Megan Fox. So I believe she's telling the truth and I hope she still has that sparkle in her eye. I hope the world didn't steal it from her. Mine died a long time ago from being bullied for 20 years. So I hope that didn't hap- did. I hope that didn't happen to her. Best wishes and blessings. That makes me kind of teary. It's so sweet. That's so she did not need to do that. And like, imagine someone like as gorgeous as Megan Fox tells you out. you're pretty or yeah, whatever, exactly. or implies that you're, yeah. you look like her. Yeah. It's the sweet. highest compliment it's for a true. woman. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you kind of look like me. You're welcome. <laughs> if someone said I kind of looked like Megan Fox, I would walk around as a whole new woman. I would wear a shirt that says one time someone said I kind of look like, <laughs> like Megan Fox. I would Fox. change my Instagram handle, my Twitter. Yeah. I would, I would become just so obnoxious. Yes. <laughs> Even more so. Yes, <laughs> truly. So the reason that this is sort of like a conversation about a girl's girl is because people were saying this is like the ultimate girl's girl well, she move. Didn't, because she didn't have to do that. Exactly. So what is a girl's girl then? Oh, I don't know. I, I hate women, clearly. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're not. No, just kidding. I think a girl's girl is someone who just advocates for other girls and doesn't get, get anything from it. We've talked about Sofia Coppola before when I think, I don't know if we mentioned it on the show. We talk so much on and off camera, <laughs> it's hard, but it's hard to Sofia know. Coppola who directed Virgin Suicides, Kirsten Dunst was the star and she was a minor in the movie. And there was a makeout scene with her and a bunch of boys on a rooftop. And Sofia said, just, you don't have to kiss them. Just nuzzle your head into their neck and make it look like it. Girl's girl, another mm-hmm. example. Because I think a, a non-girl's girl or a man would be like, no, I want it to be real yeah. because this is my movie. Like, like put, has- your com- put your yeah. comfort aside yes, exactly. for the good of the film or whatever. I wrote, um, um, I wrote, it's basically a woman who doesn't make her personality appealing to men. Yeah. And so instead like, almost trying to appeal to women. To which make- is what we see so much online right now with the pick me girls mm-hmm. who are like, I like that exactly it's the opposite of a pick me girl who's like classic example is like i'm not like other girls i hate i hate drama like no you don't you love drama i love sports and beer or whatever yeah I don't um, know. When I was young, one of my role models was Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld, and I love that character still to this day. But there's a scene where um, she says, she's like, oh, I have no, I just realized I have no more female friends. And then Kramer is like, well, that's because you're a man's woman. You hate right. other women and they hate you. And she's like, thank you. And at the time, it was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, But now- We were taught growing up that that was cool. Yes, exactly. And people said that to me. They're like, oh, you're such an Elaine. Like, Mm -hmm. you're such a guy's girl. And I'm like, when I was young, I was like, that's so cool. I'm so cool. And then I grew out of that. And I was like, no. It's not. You don't don't want to make your personality appealing to men because then, like, what is that? You have to just be authentic. Well, especially because they just want to have sex with you. Exactly. And that's yeah. you, you and learn that's that. why pick me girls do it. It's because they want to seem attractive to men. Exactly. By the way, every woman who's straight wants to be attractive to that's men. That's the thing. You can't just be a full, full girls girl yeah. or a pick me. Like no. you, you, we're all nuanced creatures. It's true. And I think um, there's a, a dark side to being a total girls girl all the time. Oh, for sure. Because then you, you think that women can do no wrong. Exactly. And it's like, um, believe including all women. Yourself. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's like, well, I'm a girl boss. Like, believe all women. Like, yeah. 
Well, I mean, we talk about this every episode. Balance, guys. It's all about balance. But I will say the true mark of a girl's girl is someone who doesn't label herself a girl's girl. Anyone who says, I love women, I'm a girl's girl, you are full of shit. No, you're lying. Because you're projecting. You're totally lying. Anyone who says that is an automatic red flag. Exactly. It's like saying, I'm cool. It's like as soon as you say you're cool, you are no longer cool. It's the same same principle applies here. Um, Because I think... As women, it's very tricky navigating relationships with other women. I love women. I think girls are the best. I prefer to hang out with women to men other than my husband and my pug, who's a boy. Um, But I also have complex relationships with some women. Like sometimes you get jealous of other girls. I fully admit that, you know, like, Mm -hmm. or like you compare yourself to them. There are areas of life where I can work on how I view other oh, yeah. women. I mean, I've had more best friends dump me than anyone I know. I Exactly. And I've I'm lost like, a I lot of female you. friends, but I still <laughs> understand. No, but exactly. It's true. And I'm it's, the same it's way. It's very complicated. Um, Maybe they can tell me what happens. <laughs> sure. Yeah. If you are listening. No. But again, like female friends also come and go so quickly because like, it's just like, I love you i hate you it's just yeah. like it's just like the circle of life yeah. frankly um, we love we love so intensely right and, and then when you hate you hate intensely as exactly well. yeah. sure and like that's why it's such a blessing when you find girlfriends who <laughs> don't abandon you completely um but yeah it's just i think a lot of women have a complicated relationship with women so like when you're uh, someone who a says lot of men do too that, <laughs> yeah well we've talked about that before yeah. but it's like when so when you are a girl who says i'm a girl's girl it's like you actually just hate women i'm convinced yeah. no yeah i'm convinced yeah. because i am willing it's to admit facade. that sometimes i don't like women and they bug me because it's like saying I love gay people. Right. You love every gay person? Yeah. Like you love every gay person? Exactly. That's stupid. Because stupid you don't now. love, well, you maybe, can't love a group of people. Yeah. Some people are bad. Some people are good. Like I don't love all men. No. I love some men. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's complicated. One thing I do like about just kind of backtracking a little too about Chelsea Blackwell saying that she looked like Megan Fox, even though it was obviously DeLulu, I kind of think that. <laughs> women and especially Gen Z, which we'll talk about a little bit more, need to go back to embracing that sort of Delulu, I'm beautiful Mm -hmm. attitude, not self-love to the point of selfishness and being so conceited and ignorant about how you actually look. Like I think be realistic, but I think a lot of people have really lost their confidence and it doesn't help that men in the manosphere are calling people like Margot Robbie mid. It really is not helpful for our think that they're no just I know but, it, but I women know. are reading that and yeah. taking it at face know, value yeah, yeah. so I think that a lot of us need to just kind of be like yeah I am beautiful and even though she doesn't look like Megan Fox like that confidence will help her get a good guy or it'll just it'll exude and and she'll be viewed as more beautiful because she's confident it's true walking around being like I'm so ugly people are gonna be like exactly okay, yeah like, it, it does read I think and we're like we're women we like any woman listening to this has obviously struggled with how she looks at some point in her life. I struggled with it this morning. Exactly. Like I, it's something that I've been open about before you've been open about. Like, it's just, it's the, it's a thing. Um, but I think it's something we need to return to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I yeah. appreciate that she's just confident enough to be like, yeah, I'm beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Megan Fox. And I, and I do agree. I think like with what Megan Fox says, I hope that this didn't crush her. Exactly. Spirit. Me too. It I really don't too. Like based on no. clips I've I seen. I don't think she's smart enough for it to crush her. <laughs> <laughs> mean, but true. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. like her though. I really like her. I'm I not, don't like her. That oh, much. really? Well, I like, think, I, think, I think she's just not smart. I, I think she's got a lot of like, love to hang out with her. No, no, I wouldn't really want to hang out with any of them. No, but she's got love to give, and I appreciate yeah, no, that. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'd hang out with her more than the other ones. They're all terrible. That's why they're on a reality TV dating show. True. So, yes. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. But I think that was super sweet of Megan Fox. Me too. And I think that's a W for her based on the fact that she allegedly transed her kid. So we're gonna. This will. <laughs> It doesn't really like even it out. But no, no. I yes. said it's just like a yes. little. Yes, no. It's, it's like this a is little an improvement. Step in the right. It's direction. a step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. So cute. Yeah. Um. So there's this. I didn't see this, but Nat sent it to me because she is in the know. I'm, my um, pulse is. I sent Nat on the a pulse. tweet that she posted. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, check this out, and I'm like, oh wait, that was you tweeting that. <laughs> it's just so she's so good. She's all over the place. Um, Zero likes. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> it's an improvement. Anyway. Um, so Dove posted a new campaign. Um, it's really sad. 
Yes. Basically, I'll, we'll just post what it is. It's very self-explanatory. Um, we've talked about Sephora kids mm-hmm. before, but basically the campaign is like, when did 10 stop being 10 or yeah. looking like 10? Is that what it says? Yeah. Um, because little girls are no longer, like they don't play in the mud anymore. No, they play with glow recipe. Yeah. Like mud masks for their fine lines Yes, at 10 years old. They're wrinkly mother cuckers. That's for sure. It's really sad. Yeah, no, it's, it's truly sad, but of course it makes complete sense, um, that this is the outcome Mm -hmm. of what I'm surprised about is that these are the children of millennials for the most part. Mm -hmm. And millennials grew up under scrutiny. We were compared to like, what's that supermodel's name? Um, Kate Moss, our whole lives and Paris Hilton and all these perfect, beautiful, skinny women. And now we're teaching our kids that they need to, to worry about aging. What did we do wrong? This is, this is a millennial's fault for the most part. Well, it's definitely a parenting error. Right. For sure. It's just crazy to me that you would put that pressure on your children when you've already dealt with this your whole life. Yeah. I don't understand that. I wonder if it's because like, I mean, every generation ages, but maybe because millennials are now currently like 30, 40 Mm -hmm. and maybe we're like doing skincare and talking about Botox and stuff in front of our children. And they're like, Oh, like, cause children imitate the of people course, that they yeah. love. So maybe that's like, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. To Obviously it's social it, media. Yeah. I'm not going to blame Northwest because like Kim Kardashian is daughter, but she's one of the people who started this trend of like mm-hmm. really Tick- young Sephora girls, kids, yeah. like doing TikTok routines where they're like putting under yeah, eye masks on. She's launching her own skin line. That's messed up. It's messed up. She's a child. She's she a child. Be doing child she stuff. should be eating dirt. Well, she's, you know, yeah, she's a little older than that, I mean, but you yeah. know what I mean? But not rubbing it on her face for like a, yeah. a treatment. Like, it's so scary. It's really scary because I just turned 30. You're 19. And it's like, (laughs) I am very much so... Aging is on my mind all the time now. Like, it's something I think about constantly. And it's something that I'm honestly obsessing over a little bit. It's something that frightens me. But it's like, I feel that I'm an adult and it sucks. I don't want to put that on a 10-year-old. I They already have so much to deal with at their age, especially as young girls. Mm -hmm. I just... I would, I feel ill thinking that a 10 year old is thinking the same thing I am. Yeah. That is despicable. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it, obviously it's like social media. Yeah. Bad parenting. Like obviously the kids will be like, oh, it's preventative. It's not. Like how like Kylie Jenner got like a facelift at 20. It's like, yeah. oh, it's preventative. You are like, ruining your skin barrier for life. It it's, makes it's me, permanent damage. It makes me sad. And I don't blame the kids. Of course not. No. Yeah. Like, of course we're not blaming the kids. No. It's for me. Like I'm just, cause you know. As a mother, I should get a sticker that says as a mother. She's a mother. I'm a mother. Um, I like Nat said, like it's makes me sick to think about these little girls and like especially my own little baby. Like yeah. I try not to say things about myself in a negative light, like physically yeah. in front of her, but I do it every little like I literally do it all the time. I'm like, don't do that. Don't call yourself fat, don't call yourself old. And then I'm like, I'm so old. Like <laughs> it's harder, it's easier said than done. Of course. But like also So I'm trying to think of like, what will I do to prevent this from happening to my sweet little monkey? Um, I think like not obsessing about skincare in front of her, like do your routine at night. Cry alone in the bathroom. Exactly. Like a good mother. Like a good mother. Um, (laughs) Do like show her like, like I want her to have like a healthy relationship with her face. Hygiene. Like let's use some Cetaphil, cleanse that face and then a little moisturizer and like, that's it, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. and then I'll do my crazy stuff at night when she's sleeping so yeah. that she doesn't need to see like me like stretching my skin. like And, and like then, crying. Exactly. And like being like, oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what I'm telling them, I'm like, oh, I want to get like laser under my fat neck. It's like, I won't say that in front of my child. Yeah. Lest she inherit that fat neck. Um, <laughs> and also like not bringing her shopping with me when I'm doing like no don't take her to sephora no for that, a long time you know i i'm of the mindset that kids belong in most places i do not believe sephora is one of those places not only because it's kind of inappropriate but it's so crowded it's very crowded and it's not stroller friendly it's not it's be- so for bad. a reason probably but yeah but like when you have a, a true like i had a when my kid was like really really young i'm like this is one of the things I want to do. I want to go to the mall and get some skincare because mm-hmm. I'm like, I have nothing else that's for me. So yeah, yeah. I'm like trying to go through the aisles and they're like, sorry, it's not stroller friendly in here. And I'm like, 
That's horrible. Especially because you kind of live in the burbs. I live in the burbs. Like, what else am I supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, and the other thing is, like, keep them off social media, which, again, easier said than done. Yeah. We talked about this last week with the with the kids with the flip phones where Gen Zers are like, oh, I was nine when I got my first smartphone. Yeah. It's like, that's messed up. That's messed up. We need to stop that from becoming the norm. But um, my child at one knows what a phone is. I'm like, I'm like, can you pass me my phone? And she passes me this. No. <laughs> <laughs> She knows what it is. Oh my gosh. So, mind you, she thinks it's just a device to watch videos of her on. Yeah. That's but she fair. knows like what I'm like, pass me that. Pass me my well, phone. like I feel like when I was a kid, I would play with my parents like electronics that yeah. had nothing in them. Yeah, like, the like a camera or I'd like play like paint on my dad's computer. Right. Like stuff like that. Um this is normal. The scope has definitely changed. Like we didn't even grow up with iPhones. Our first phones were like I like, had like a Nokia. Like, exactly. Dee, 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 dee. Or like when our parents first got phones, they were like ridiculous and they didn't mm-hmm. even have cameras <laughs> or like texting. Ew. Like it was like literally, I know. I know. It was like a telephone. It <laughs> exactly. It was a basically telephone. a wireless telephone. Um, yeah. So this, the times have changed. Um, yeah. But it's no wonder then that people are saying that someone like Miley Cyrus, who's just, she's 32, I think, or 31, looks good for her age. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so well, like she's aging so well. So someone said, someone tweeted this. She said, I'm sorry, but this woman is loved by God. All the drugs she's done, all the chaos she's been in, and she's probably the best aging celebrity alongside Beyonce. Like she can still pass as 20 TBH, a senior in any high school Netflix show. I am floored. <laughs> You're floored that her skin isn't drooping off her yeah. face. Like she doesn't have like tits down to the floor. Do you know why her skin isn't drooping? It's because first of all, she didn't subject herself to uh, herself to drunk elephant the way y'all are at ten. Number one, number two, it's also because she's rich. Mm-hmm. She can afford it. I'm pretty sure also, she's already had a mini facelift. She has. She's had some buccal fat. Yeah, sure. she's definitely had but work also, done. Also, she's only 31 or two. Yeah, she's like, a she's a child. So this other girl tweeted about how people. I don't want to read the whole thing. You can read them. I can, I, can, I can read it. Yeah, I'm bad at reading. So right. Beginning to think all the discourse around women in their 30s is due to Gen Z just having absolutely no idea what 30 year old women look like. Miley looks great, but she looks her age at 31. It's just that 31 is not old. She can't pass for a senior in high school, but she could play one in a movie as 30 year olds often do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like we were growing up, Purdue the Liars. They were all like in their late 20s mm-hmm. playing 16 year olds. Yeah, except like the for OC. The, what's her name? The lead girl, Allison De Laurentiis was right. played by a minor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll either, like, again, like, yeah. you'll see, like, Ryan was like 25 and yeah. Melissa was like 16. 17, yeah. So it's like, mm. Yeah, but weird. often they get adults to play teenage roles because you because they're having sex or doing drugs usually, which is obviously inappropriate for a minor to mm-hmm. pretend to do, uh, yeah. even if it is for yeah. TV. Um, I, yeah, I think it's really funny that people are like, "Wow, Miley, you look so good." She does look good, of course. She's beautiful. She's also a rich celebrity, yes. So she's gonna look good, but it's like it's her job to look good. Yeah, but people also age at different speeds like yes. some people will be like oh nah you look so good for 30 but well, it's like it's genetics maybe they too. know someone who's 30 who like looks a little more ragged for sure. i also think that like you know when you see people that have like always looked old yeah and you're like in high school you looked 30 yeah i feel like those people kind of just stay that age and then when we're 60 they're still gonna look 30 so yeah. i feel like it all kind of balances out maybe yeah that's I my mean, theory anyway i mean i i hope not like i hope when i'm 60 i look 30 yes you know well maybe you will but it's kind of interesting because We've talked about this, I think, in another episode 100 years ago um, about how like people in their 30s are kind of in their prime, actually. Like it's something to look forward to because we talked about how Gen Z is scared of turning 30. Mm -hmm. Um, We've. I feel like we've talked about this relentlessly already, but it's like, it's because we're 30. Yeah. But so many movies growing up were about women in their thirties in their prime. There's sex in the city. I know it's a TV show, but they were all in their thirties friends. They were all late twenties, early thirties. Um, we have, uh, how to lose a guy in 10 days, 13 going on 30. They were all like killing it. They Mm -hmm. were these hot women and men sort of killing it or on the verge of killing it. And it was just, they were all beautiful Mm -hmm. and it was aspirational. Mm -hmm. Even new girl, like they're all 30 and Mm -hmm. they're hot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, yeah, no, it's like we have, I don't know. On one hand we have all these like aspirational 30 year olds. And then on the other hand, we're like 30. So, old. yeah, it's not old. And I think we need to reject that mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And I forget what I was going to say, but it was going to be so good. Oh, just let it come to you. Feverish. She's 
not well. I'm a little sick, but it's okay. But she looks great. Shoot, I forget what I was going to say. Ugh, I don't know. I just, it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's sad. Some people look better at 30 than others. That's just because some people look better always. And it's genetic. It's genetic. And Miley Cyrus is rich and she's pretty. So yeah, it's not that weird that she doesn't look terrible at 30. No. That's kind of, these are like 12 year olds writing this stuff. Yeah. And you guys need to cool it. Okay. Cool it. Okay. Because otherwise you're going to end up looking like Lisa Rinna. Mm. Who? Just kidding. I actually remember seeing her face like all the time, but never knew who she was until I started watching Beverly yeah. Housewives of Beverly Hills. She was a soap opera actor. Yes. Briefly. Briefly. Not for very and, long. And she does like commercials and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, a she's big old beautiful. Ham. Oh my gosh. When she was young. Yeah. Beautiful woman. 10 out of 10. Her body, 10 out of 10. Yeah, she's great. Um, but she has gone overboard with the filler. She's actually known for her giant overfilled lips. It's like one of her standard, like, yeah, one she's of her always had them. She's always had like the spiky short, like mom mm-hmm. haircut and the overfilled lips. Like you'll recognize her. We'll post her photo, but she recently was somewhere and her face looks whack. Yeah. She's 60. Yeah. She's 60 years old. And I can, I can honestly empathize with a woman who's in Hollywood at 60. Well, and her children are like models. Yeah. So it must be tricky. Yeah, the whole thing is... Yeah, it's a lot. And her husband's a really hot actor. Yeah. What's his name again? Harry Hamlin. She always calls him Harry Hamlin. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, Harry Hamlin's calling me. It's like, your husband, you call him his full name. He's a good looking man. They're cute. He's cute. Yeah, they're a beautiful couple. Um, She's crazy. Mm -hmm. She's a crazy person and her face looks crazy, but I also really empathize with her. Yes. 60 years old and still trying to like make it work in Hollywood. Like that's rough. It's, there's pressure there, especially in the land of the beautiful. Everyone there is beautiful. Especially like in the cheeks, there's pressure there. Yeah, the, exactly. The there's lips. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, um, it's I just think it's time to lock up plastic surgeons. Uh, we said this last week, I'm pretty sure, but mm-hmm. fillers and stuff like that were not ever intended to be cosmetic specifically. They weren't supposed to give you big lips or like high cheeks. They were supposed to be for scars and 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 other issues and to fill deep wrinkles, like the good stuff. Mm-hmm. But now you guys are deforming your faces with them. Y'all look crazy. And not you guys, you look But great. if even Lisa Rinna ends up looking like a freak, imagine what the rest of us normies are going to look like in 20 years. She's rich. Exactly. And on television all the time. So she always like, she has people looking at her face all the time, like doing her makeup, getting laser, all this she stuff. She knows the best in the business. Exactly. Yeah. So if she looks like a freak and you're she, screwed. She said like, oh, fillers weren't a good idea for me. It's like, I don't believe you believe that because you've been filling your lips for like two decades. Yes. Yes. So exactly. You, you know, you took it too far and that can be dissolved. So you're going to be fine. I think, you know, it's weird because people don't in Hollywood there is no such thing as aging gracefully because Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, just age gracefully. It's like, no, because if you do that, you're actually going to get aged. You're going to get aged You're going to look like Alexis Bledel. Exactly. Who is one of the most gorgeous human beings that's ever walked the earth. Objectively. But she doesn't fill her face. So now as like a whatever, she's like maybe 35, maybe 40. I don't know. She looks so much older than her peers because she doesn't fill her face. And Mm -hmm. it's like, she's no longer really working that much. No. And, and maybe that's by choice. I think maybe, she's exactly. married. I don't know why, but it's, yeah. I looked at her and I was like, whoa, she looks old. But it's like, no, she doesn't look old. She, she looks, looks her age. Her age, because everyone around her is completely puffed up. So it's like, yeah. so in Hollywood, this does not apply to us normies, but in, like, in Hollywood, you can't just be like, aging gracefully like no no no. you have to have good cosmetics it's so true that's the thing like you can't say someone looks good for their age when they're rich yeah exactly <laughs> you don't look good for your age you no. look good because you're rich yeah anyway yeah and we look good because we're genetically blessed but yeah you know, that doesn't go for and everyone. we have lights on <laughs> it's a big one it's a huge light uh yeah yeah and all right yeah okay so let's talk about sex in the city yeah uh, who's because- having it <laughs> I don't live in the city, so and I'm, you know, just the homeless man outside. He's yeah. having it. <laughs> Yuck. Um, do you want to take it away? Sure. So yeah. there's this article um, that Nat sent me because again, she's on my top fingers of it. on the pulse. She's on the pulse right here. Um, so there's this girl who wrote an article that says, "I'm Gen Z watching Sex in the City for the first time. It's not just outdated; it's cringy." Um, Shut okay. up. Yeah. So you're the cringy one. <laughs> yes. First of all. Um, actually true. So, so cringy. Um, she basically makes all these arguments about why the show is, is like, yeah, it's outdated 
but she thinks it's like more harmful than that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she really read into it. Yeah, she read in. It's like, girl, it's a television show yeah. about a bunch of skanks. Like, yeah. calm down. Yeah. Um, and she's like, I'm a writer who lives in New York, and I don't go out for mimosas and, and brunch and wear Louis yeah, Vuittons. It's like can afford rent in Brooklyn. <laughs> also, you're a bad writer because this is garbage. It's a, basically a listicle, but an article. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, it's, and it's also like like you just said. It's like she's reading way too much into a show from the '90s about a bunch of gangs who that was never realistic. No, like Carrie writes an article a week about Barely, sex, if and she's that. exactly, and she's, and she's wearing Manolos and man, like she's a closet full of designer f- like footwear, and she lives in Manhattan, like or the Upper East Side or whatever. Yeah. It's like no, she lives in a brownstone. <laughs> yeah, like no, that's not real. It was never realistic, yeah. but that's we all loved the fantasy of being like, but, I'm wearing designer to brunch today. When like, did that get controversial? Of course. Like they all have on it. Like even in the OC, I know they're all supposed to be rich kids, but like they're all wearing Prada. I know. It's the same with Mean Girls. They're wearing archive Louis Vuitton. It's okay that they, it's out of reach for us. That's why I'm watching the movie. And like Gossip Girl, like no yeah. one dressed like that. No. Like I'm sure the rich kids, even the richest kids in those private schools in New York City don't dress like that. They're not wearing like blazers and heels. Well, they're wearing and- a uniform. Exactly. Designed by... Tom Ford. Yes. <laughs> but it's like you, the, people, it's a fantasy show. Yes. It's, it's supposed to be glamorous and not within reach. Otherwise it's not fun and sexy. And then she basically just continued on about how she doesn't like the show because it's so politically incorrect. It's like, yes, yes, the show ended in like 2004 when the world was at peace. Mm-hmm. Other than 9-11. It's like this girl, go back in time and watch anything and you're going to have a meltdown. But it's not just that. Like she talks about how all the characters on the show are horrible people and they're horrible friends, which, okay, yes, they're all controversial. They're all selfish people, which Mm -hmm. is kind of maybe the point of the show. But go and watch any new show today about friends or a married couple or high school kids. And they're all 10 times worse. They're they're all doing terrible things to each other because that's conflict. Euphoria. They're all like raping each other and doing drugs all the time. It's disgusting. Like you I need that conflict though. Yeah, sure. But it's like, it's 10 times worse now than it was then. Mm-hmm. It's just now they have like Hunter Schaefer playing a girl. Mm-hmm. So it's way more inclusive and there's yeah. gay guys boning in the yeah. bathroom. Like it's like, okay. And even sex in the city, she has gay friends. Yeah. They like, so she brings up this one point about, um, how this is the worst part. I think is that, Again, spoiler if you haven't seen this episode, but um, Miranda gets pregnant and she, <laughs> the the writer of this article is saying how Miranda was thinking about having an abortion and she, ta- and she talks to her friends and Carrie and Samantha both say, oh, I've had abortion, I've had an abortion. And then Charlotte is like, has, has had trouble conceiving a child. So she was like, don't get an abortion because it's been so hard for me. And like, I can't imagine throwing away something so precious like yeah. that. And at the end of the day, Miranda yeah. chooses not to get the abortion. And the author is like, w- I'm so disappointed. That she killed her baby? That she didn't kill her baby. Oh, yeah. Like, she didn't kill it. She's yeah. like, she should have stuck to her guns and done what she... She, she should have murdered her child. She, she didn't get the abortion. Because Roe v. Wade was overturned 20 years later. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. It's like, that's your argument? That yeah. the, so anyone, so the life experience of the two women who had abortions is like, yes, oh my God, girl, preach. And then the life experience of the woman who is scared she's infertile Mm-hmm. It, it does it's it's oh, cringy it's, no it just doesn't count it doesn't count yes because like, it doesn't push any sort of narrative exactly yes. it's like so sick it's like so whether or not miranda chose to abort her child or not it's like mm-hmm. you were just mad that they were giving that argument a platform at all i also <laughs> i love how she says i'm also part of a generation where it isn't uncommon to have one of your close friends identify as a different sexual orientation my peers and i were very young when gay marriage was legalized in u.s in 2015 as a result one of my biggest issues with the show is the self-proclaimed sex columnist carrie who is supposed to be pushing the boundaries of our opinions on sex but came across as strangely proper towards something that was so normalized today Sorry, is the heterosexual woman supposed to write about gay sex? She's yeah. writing about her sex life. Yeah, the whole she's a sex columnist as a hetero it's woman. Her stories too. She just like changes the names up and she talks about her own experiences. You twerp, write what you know. I Clearly, know. you don't know and what you're a writing ton about. Of gay characters in the show. Yeah, her best friend is gay. Yeah. It's just. It's, I thought the show was quite progressive for was, the time. It was progressive for the time. But like this girl doesn't realize that like the show, her work right now, this article is also a moment in time. Yeah. And one day 
maybe today, it will be looked on as cringy too yes. because times change. And she thinks that she can just be so woke and mm-hmm. so right that no matter what year it is, it will always stand true. Yeah. But that's not the case, girlfriend. Yeah. You, to me, you're already cringe, but in 20 years, you're going to be cringe to a lot more people too. It's like, just understand that things have a time. In- Embrace the cringe 2024. Exactly. Too. Embrace it. I'm all about embracing it. I don't find the show to be cringy. I like it. It's not cringy. It's like Carrie's, and she's like, Carrie's a bad person. It's yes. like, we all know that Carrie's a bad person. Point. But she also talks as if she can't relate to any of these characters at all. Oh, you can't relate to dating a guy who's a loser? You can't relate to like wanting to buy shoes you can't afford mm-hmm. and buying them anyway? Or yeah, or, or like someone proposing to you and then you wear the ring on your neck maybe you can't relate to that maybe you will though like it's <laughs> like there are one day. you can you can find pieces to relate to mm-hmm. and if you can't just enjoy the show it's a pretty well thought out show it's it's well written it's the great. characters are interesting it's well acted and the costumes are to die mm. for at the very least yeah. it's i don't know i think it's a really thoughtful show um so yeah i don't know you're allowed to disagree i just think you're wrong yeah you know yeah and you're cringe yeah. And that's my opinion on it. And uh, God bless you. God bless you. And we hope you find someone because apparently, according to millionaire matchmaker Patty Stanger, it's tough out there. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I haven't watched the show, but I know. You need to. I know, I know, I know. Yes. I know. My my mother-in-law watches it and you watch it. I and love you're it. both like, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but from what I understand, it's a matchmaker who sets yep. up rich people. Yeah. Millionaires. And- with hot girls or with other millionaires? No, with um, just regular people usually. So millionaire plus a regular person. Yep. Love that. For usually. That. Um, and so she is talking about what's going on in the current dating mm-hmm. scene. Yes. So um, she's been a matchmaker like her whole life. Her mother and grandmother were both matchmakers. So mm, it's basically like a family so business. I don't think she's married. She was engaged for a bit. And then I think that ended. Um, That's not a great like stat for her no it's like, unfortunate it's not a great credential no i but agree okay we can but still listen to her she and- actually has sage advice yes and honestly any anything can help you in this day for sure um so basically she said because of like the state of dating apps um and the fact that women are a lot more successful and more financially stable it's a little trickier because no one really knows their roles anymore uh in the dating world so it's like mm, It's kind of like funny because it's like you kind of hear this on Twitter a little bit like, oh, women are like men now, which is not really what she's saying. But her whole shtick when you watch the show, you'll you'll hear this is basically that the man needs to take charge and be romantic and plan dates and be thoughtful. And the woman needs to embrace femininity in response. So it's not like this like forced sexist like dynamic between men and women. It's kind of just the way nature intended is kind of her whole thing, Um, which is. I don't think that's really lacking that much now, but maybe I'm wrong because I've been married five years. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I think what we see in the media portrays that that is not the case. Like yeah. People are like, have sex like a man. Like, I think maybe that's kind of going out I think now. so. Um, yeah. But I do think that it's like almost like part of the zeitgeist of the, this generation is like, I don't need a man, like all this stuff. And yeah. she says something interesting here, which got me thinking about, Another reason, like, because there's the the money and the power, but there's also, she says, American women are now outpacing men in several er- arenas, including college, homeownership, um, and salary in some places. She says, plus, some are showing less interest than men in having children, mm-hmm. and they don't even need a male partner to get pregnant if they decide to have kids. And I and I think that might not be, like, a huge piece of the puzzle, but I think it's a very important yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because like, look it, at Lala Kent. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you could be, like with someone who's like pretty good and you're like, "Mm, you're not perfect. And there's no pressure biologically to be like, well, you're pretty good and I do love you. And I think you'd be a great dad. So like, let's get married and have children and like make this work and fall more in love with each other. And like walk down this path together. You could just be like, you're not perfect. You don't check every single Mm -hmm. box. I don't need you. I can go to a sperm bank. I can get a surrogate. I can do IVF. I can do all this stuff. I don't need to worry about my biological clock. And And I I think think that's like, causing people to not like commit to each other. I think so too. And I think on the other side, a man's like, well, this woman's pushing 30 so I can go find some fresh meat, fresh out of university. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's like, there's both of those issues. And we've, we've, I feel like we've, we've beaten this like to death, but I have said this a million times. People are so picky. Like, and, and, 
everyone always asks like, oh, how did you know your spouse was the one? Like you just pick someone and you make it work for the rest of your freaking life. And like, hopefully you have the basics, like good value, like Mm -hmm. politically you should be aligned spiritually, religiously, you should be aligned. And then a couple other things too, you should be transparent about some things and then you just choose to do it. But I think dating apps, everyone thinks that they have more choices than they have. And everyone thinks they're which is kind of this commodity. Yeah. Like like you're not that great. You're not that special. (laughs) Like you're not like, no, I know. I know you're right. You should feel honored that someone wants to spend their life with you. Like I'm a lot, (laughs) I can be a lot, (laughs) but someone chose to do it. And like, they are a lot too. Like, you know, we butt heads, but not every day is perfect. And I feel like part of the reason why people are like, well, why bother getting married? It's like, because if you have a day where both of you aren't perfect and you're like looking at each other and you're like, huh, what, what, what is going on? Why am I with you? If you're married, you're like, well, we're married and we're make gonna, it work. gonna make this work because we made a commitment to each other in front of our family, in front of God and all these yeah. people. But if you're just dating and you're like, I can get a baby anywhere. I don't need you. It's like, Sure, maybe it's in empowering in a way, but it's also like not conducive to finding a lifelong partner. And no. if that's what you want, you should probably like switch how you're dealing with people. Yeah. And I think what you said about like being aligned on certain things is so important. Like mm-hmm. spiritually, yes, that is like the biggest thing, yeah. I think. Oh, and yeah, then 100%. politically is like you can work it out, but I do think it's like you don't want your vote to cancel out the other person's vote. Exactly. Because you then know? you're just wasting time just going wasting down your to vote. vote. Exactly. exactly. And like when when things happen in the world, do you want like imagine like because OJ Simpson just died. Imagine yeah. you're like married to someone and he, the verdict came in like back in the 90s and and you're like not guilty. And then one person's like, yeah. And the other person's like, no, it's like, yeah. Or like COVID vaccines. (laughs) That's a big one. Stuff like that. That's a big one for people. Like I know lots of people who are like, I can't be with someone because of this, this thing here, because we're not aligned and it's going to trickle down into other parts of our life. It will. It will. Yeah. Don't give people the benefit of the doubt. It will. In that case. Yeah. And I think if you want to be like a girl boss, like that is, I certainly haven't like, there's nothing wrong with that because you don't need to be a traditional feminine woman in order to find love. Certainly not. But as, as long as the guy is on board and yeah. is like aligned, Just be on the same page, be on the same page. That's yeah. all. That's so important. And we talked about this before as well. I can't remember when, but it's like, if you're struggling to find someone, maybe you should pause and stop looking and start looking within. And maybe, especially if you're a Christian, just focusing on Christ and trying to be more like him because you're going to meet the right person when he wills it. Yeah. And if it's not your time now, clearly God wants you to work on something. Yes, exactly. So stop swiping as if you're the queen or king of the world and just like look in the mirror for five seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and stop being so picky. Advice. Because if you're going to like look at yourself, com- compare yourself to anyone in the world, compare yourself to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And try to aim to be like that. And people will be like, falling in love with you because they're like you're so kind you're so considerate you're so strong you're so and you know who you are yeah you're you're confident exactly and you're not going to be swayed like oh he manipulated me that's not gonna happen girlfriend because you're 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 rooted you're exactly you're solid you're walking on solid ground that's yeah great advice her patty what's her name patty stanger's advice is to just not give up which is also it's also good advice also good advice but and, and by the way, once you watch the show, you'll see this, but Patty is very big on self-improvement and she's, she's very honest with people about why things are wrong. She's the one who coined, like, if you're failing in all these relationships, the common denominator is you. So you need to fix yourself. I've totally stolen that from her and used it as if I made it up, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm giving her credit. <laughs> um, but it's true. Well, that's probably like me and my female relationships. I'm probably the problem. No, <laughs> she's great. We love, we love yeah, her. No, I have female friends. It's just, you know, I've had. I also think that when you get older and you're married and you also have children uh, or you're going to have children, you have a child, but your life just changes so much. Yeah. Like I, like when you're married, especially me and Seb have been married five years. We don't have kids yet, but like a lot of our friends are still single. You're just in a different place. It's so different. It's, it's completely different. Like, no, I cannot go out for cocktails with you because I'd rather use that money to go out with my husband. Yeah. And like my girlfriends and I used to do like Wednesday night wine night. Right. Exactly. And get slammered on a Wednesday night and right. like watch The Bachelor. It's like, that was the highlight of my week. And yes. we had so much fun, but it's like, now those girlfriends are with their own children right. and I'm with mine. Or and their like, spouse. Like, exactly. Exactly. They're doing stuff. They're busy. Yeah. So it's like, we all have 
we all have priorities. Exactly. And that's fine. And I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just fine. Yeah, she's great. Um, you know who's not doing fine, though? This girl. Who, no. This is... Uh, I think she's fine. I think it's the guy yes, who's well, not doing fine. She, she's going to be all right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this right. is kind of piggybacking on what we were just talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. It's the other side of the coin that mm-hmm. kind of Nat mentioned. Um, so this is the tweet, and I'll just read the tweet. It's, a guy literally six years older than me has just rejected me on the basis that I'm not young enough for him. Doomed. Um, so again, this is a tweet from some random person. It could be made up. And we're yeah, going to discuss it as if it's not real. verify it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. well, how we're going to go knock on her door. Like, um, we are you Vanilla Spit? <laughs> that's her name. Vanilla Spit. Okay. So. Well, maybe that's why you're single. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so it got me thinking, like, why are men so obsessed with young women? It's the fertility conversation. Right. It is. And yeah. they'll always say, because I read the comments mm-hmm. on this and this guy was like, oh, well, you want a guy, like he's talking proverbially. He's like, you want a man who's over six feet for your genetic pool. And no. I want a man, Nobody I want a woman that. who's 20 for my genetic pool. And it's like, okay. No. So for me, the conversation went all the way down to like, what do they think about, what do men know about fertility? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do they know that their sperm count depletes over time as well? And that their sperm can affect the rate of miscarriage. Exactly. And also the gender, by the way, uh, mm-hmm. King Henry, mm-hmm. the whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah. So like this girl, apparently people were saying that she, they get, I don't know how they figured this out, but they think the girl is 25 or 26 based on mm-hmm. her, like her profile, meaning the guy is probably 31 or 32. So he's looking for a guy or girl. Why are you unmarried and you're so old? And he's like trying to date a 21 year old. <laughs> yeah, or something. that's gross. Because six so years gross. isn't a big enough gap. So maybe 10 years. She's is. not going to date you unless yeah. you're an NBA player. She's exactly. just not because you're, she's going to think you're old. You're yeah. closer to her dad's age. Gross. Like, yeah, it's just most young women don't find, we've already, I feel like we talked about this last week, but most young women, when they're like 19, 20, they think 25 is old, mm-hmm. let alone 30. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Um. So like men always say like, it's about fertility. It's like, okay, so I looked into it a little bit. Nice. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and basically. <laughs> it's a shallow end. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very briefly. Um. So basically, yes. Um, you, you start losing eggs right from the day you're born and it actually slows down when you hit puberty. So you start losing, you lose like 10,000 eggs a month before puberty. Mm. And then after puberty, it's like down to a thousand eggs per month. So technically by the numbers, the best time to impregnate someone is at the second they hit puberty, which is freaking gross, obviously. And and that's disgusting. So it's not about the numbers really, because that's disgusting. No one wants to you know, for sure. Anyways, so then it's like, okay, so then why 20 and not 30? Well, because apparently at 30, women's quality and quantity of eggs starts to decline. That's true. So men will hear something like that and be like, well, there you go. That's why. And it's like, okay, but what does it mean exactly that your quality of eggs declines? It's not that you're having worse babies. It's not like, eh, this was the 20 year old baby was the pretty one. And this is the stupid if one. That's the case. How'd your baby end exactly. up so beautiful? I have an immaculate child. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not that it's actually that they're just, it makes it harder to conceive. You might have more miscarriages. You might, which also is completely subjective by the way, completely subjective. And there can be a multitude, like we said, a multitude of factors, including Mm -hmm. some that the men are like, if he's, he drinking too much, is he drinking, smoking? Is he drinking too much coffee? Did she get off birth control recently? Has she ever been on birth control? Exactly. Are her, is her thyroid okay? Like your thyroid affects your fertility. Like all these things, when the wind blows a weird way, it affects your fertility and exactly. your hormones. There's so, so many factors. So for me, reading all these things, it's like, okay, so there really isn't much of a difference between a 25-year-old woman trying to get pregnant and a 35-year-old woman trying no, to get pregnant. No, she just has less wrinkles, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And better credit, maybe. And I understand, like, <laughs> there is, like, I don't want to be one of those women that's like, there is no fertility window. That's a lie, too. Like, we've of talked course. about this as well. It's like yes. IVF, like freezing your eggs. These things are not always, like, sure work. Fire. they're very expensive. Yeah. They don't always work. We've read articles where the woman froze all her eggs, did her career, and then was like, oh, none of them are viable. Yeah. So you do have a fertility window. But like men thinking that you they need to be with a 20-year-old no, it's disgusting. for their future children, they mm-hmm. I feel like they don't even understand the bait because I didn't until mm-hmm. I did 20 seconds of research and I was like, oh, it's not that you can't have good, healthy babies at after a certain yeah. age. It's just like 
you're, it's going to take a little longer. And yeah. what's wrong? You don't want to have sex. Like you don't want to, yeah. You like, don't want to try. You don't want to ha- like, what do you hate sex that much, dude? Like, yeah. it's just such a weird conversation that men feel like they're so entitled to having it's this. It's true. And it's completely misguided. And you're allowed to have preferences. Like, of course, if you're a 30 year old, you want to date a 20 year old because you're a pedo. <laughs> you I'm have, just kidding. You have immature, like, yeah, sure. Maybe you have a, the mind of a child. You're exactly. you're the male Bella. That's fine. And Go like, for yeah, it. Yeah, young women are prettier. I don't know. Like, are they though? Because I feel like it's always. subjective. <coughs> like, Sorry. yeah, they have they produce collagen still. But if I buy some red light therapy, I'm gonna be back <laughs> like a spring chicken in no time. Exactly. So um, it's, it's a- also interesting because, like, if you're a 40 year old guy or 35 and you're dating younger. And she's 20, but you're old and you have a baby. When your baby is older, like a teenager, you're going to be really old. Mm -hmm. And then they have this worry or they might have this concern that you're so old that you're going to die before they get to like do anything in their life. There are genuinely kids who have older parents who worry about this. So it's just, it's like, it's actually just a lose, lose situation in that, in that regard. Cause you're stressing out your poor child too. And obviously this is like, I'm just making this up out of yeah. thin air, but no, it's but like, I've known people like that who yeah. have like the older parents and it's like, Oh, they can't play on the soccer exactly. field with us. Cause he has knee problems. Cause exactly. your dad is old. Like, like you're not as, <clears throat> you're not as with it and you're not as sharp when you're older. That's just a fact. Even if you're a man, energy. exactly. So it's going to be a lot more difficult to chase your toddler down the street when you're an old man with a knee surgery. Yeah. Like when my mom watches my toddler, She's, she's amazing. Probably exhausted but after. She, at the end of the day, she's like, I'm so tired. I'm exactly. going to go sleep now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm tired too. But like, I'm, you know, 30 She's something. with like, it. Yeah. I have, I have the energy. I just, and I, I like, part of me is like, I totally understand people having preferences. I don't want to be like, ew, you, you should date a 40 year old. You don't need to do that. No. Okay. But it's like this kind of guy who's like 32 years old and is like, wants to date a 22 year old because of probably fertility. He probably doesn't understand the basic science yeah. behind it and, and it's, it's just told that and he's like ah, fertility and it's like, i know explain it to me sir I mean, what exactly you're talking about no it's true meanwhile men are like oh my gosh women are so stupid they believe everything they read yeah i know like it's like you just heard that like yes women are more fertile in numbers yeah but that doesn't mean that they can't have like i had my first at 33 and yeah. i'm gonna have my or yeah my second at 34 my cousin is pregnant at 39. Yeah. Like I know people who most of Seb's, my husband's family, his aunts had their babies when they were like 39, 40. Mm-hmm. They're killing it. It doesn't mean it's easier to no. get pregnant. Certainly not. Let's not lie about it, no, but no. it's not impossible. And no. I feel like men are just, they just have like a little piece that they're just like told like and fertility. Ultimately, you're going to have kids when God wants you to, if God wants you to. Exactly. And that's another thing. Don't make an idol out of having children because what if you can't? What if you can't? Then I sure hope you married someone that you truly exactly. have a lot in common with. Exactly. And you love. Because that's who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yes, okay? Totally. That's such a good point. Yeah. Love um, that. We forgot to talk about our sponsors. Oops. Um, Covenant Eyes. Porn, you're addicted to it. We get it. You can fix that. Go to covenanteyes.com. Use code shallow at checkout for your first month free. That's covenanteyes.com. Use code shallow at checkout for your first month free. And guess what? Mm-hmm. I didn't take my marine health food supplements this month, and that's why I'm sick. Look at her. Look, I look like death. So please Disaster. go to marinehealthfoods.com and use code shallow end for 10% off your first order of um, uh, supplements, including but not limited to Oyster Max, which could save my life, but and I didn't take it. Fertility secret for all you forty-year-olds. Exactly. If the looking if for a thirty-year-old wants you to have yes. children. Yes. Okay. It's most important. Yes. All right. Well, that's the show. But death looks great um, on you. Hmm? Death. Thanks. It's yeah. the glow. It's the sweat. It's the death Love glow. It. <laughs> um, <laughs> you look so good, like right before you die. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we be real? Let's be real for a be second. Be real. Okay. Do you want to go first? Sure. Teen complains about having white grandma name. My life is over, bro. Would you rather be named Kale? I literally wrote Grele. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Disney to permanently ban visitors who lie about disabilities for park perks. Um, the new changes come into effect May 20th, so be sure to go before then. <laughs> I truly cannot think of anything more pathetic than pretending to be disabled to get on Space Mountain. Like I do it. <laughs> <laughs> A 30-pound cat nicknamed Thicken Nugget is swimming his way to his goal weight. I disrespect him for not going on Ozempic. 
I was going to say working out. Ew, haven't you heard of Ozempic? <laughs> Thicken. Same mind. Thicken. <laughs> nasty little boy. Um, family who got their nine-year-old son a pet octopus reveal how it upended their life. Um, now that's an army. <laughs> I said, um, I want the rights to that movie. Sounds great. <laughs> can I be the octopus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fake meat can cause real health risks. Experts call for caution amid plant-based craze. No, the synthetic meat patties made with seed oils are bad for you? Yeah, you thought the item that was 100% beef was worse? <laughs> Gay Spanish politician with left-wing governing party resigns after photos circulate showing him eating his own feces. That is literally shitty. (laughs) It gives the uh, term eat shit a whole new meaning. (laughs) Two-thirds of U.S. colleges, universities require DEI classes to graduate. How about just requiring people being smart? I feel like everyone's definitely getting an A in that class. They have to. They have such a good point. <laughs> Push for pet bereavement leave is on the rise at companies across the U.S. Haters of this have clearly never had a Pepe in their life before. No, I totally f- think that this is sound. Yeah. Yeah. I flew over, f- I flew over 15... 15- thousand miles right hundred fifteen hundred i flew over fifteen hundred miles for uh i wrote the wrong article okay hold on again <laughs> i flew over fifteen hundred miles to meet a guy i'd been talking to online just to be ghosted girl play a little hard to get yeah i really hope he lived in like a nice vacation spot at least yeah <laughs> recreation use of erectile dysfunction drugs is rising doctors say it's dangerous in reality they're just stockpiling them for themselves it's not the only thing that's rising. Trans actor Hunter Schaefer doesn't want to play trans roles. So cis people can't play them. Trans people won't play them. I'll do it. Erasing trans people in the media? You bigot? <laughs> well, that's it. You did it. That's the show. Like I said before, subscribe, like, share, donate, love. We love you guys. Thanks for going on this ride with us. 50 episodes, woo, 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 two woo. subscribers. We're killing it. <laughs> okay. Love you. See Bye. You